over the last couple of months, uh, you've been meeting with committee members, with the governance committee, and as well as community members from the board, and they have all had some similar questions in regards to the upcoming changes that are quite possible. And so many of them are asking, why now? Well, multiple reasons. The main reason is obviously we're having a fiscal cliff. Um, our projected budget next year will have a deficit of about $1 million. Um, we've also had a drastic decrease in enrollment uh, over the last two decades. We've gone from about 3,500 students uh, to 2,300 students. Okay, and can you explain how fund balance and reserves work and what are those balances now and why can't we use those funds to avoid this fiscal cliff? Well, we are allowed to put 4% in an unassigned fund balance, but that's set up for emergencies, for things that happen throughout the school year. Uh, we have other reserves like capital reserves and TRS and ERS reserves, and that money is set aside uh, for those specific cases, and they're allocated in there by the Board of Education. Um, and one of the goals over the last couple of years is to get our reserves back uh, to a much stronger place as we go forward with our capital project and our bond issuance. And so schools um, were also given a lot of money um, recently as part of a federal funding package. How come we can't use those funds that we just received? Well, the purpose of those funds were uh, situations due to COVID, learning loss, transportation, uh, make sure we have everything we need to come in 100% in person. And specifically, that money was not supposed to be used for reoccurring costs. Uh, teacher salaries and specifics going forward in terms of our general funding, uh, that's not what that money was put aside for. Then what about the new buildings, uh, construction that are, are being planned all over the area? Um, will we have enough capacity for new enrollments that might happen in the future if we have to repurpose a building? Uh, yes, one, one of the things we've done, we, we reached out to the community, we know how many building permits there are. Uh, we've built into all three of our plans uh, enough room for growth. Um, and lastly, that's one of the reasons why we are going to repurpose one of the buildings if, you know, down the road in the future, uh, we do need to repurpose those for traditional classrooms. Oh, okay. Um, and then how does the increase in housing um, being built impact our revenue? So if there is housing that is being built, we're going to see the benefit of that, correct? That's more of a, re a redistribution. Uh, our budget is based on the tax levy and the tax cap calculation and how much we get from the state aid and how much we get locally. Um, th that's, how th that's how much money our budget can be. It's not based on directly correlated to the population our house is being built. Okay, and I know a big concern was about class sizes. Mm -hmm. So if we repurpose a building and then move those students to the other schools, what's going to happen with class sizes? So there will be some classes that will increase, but there's also going to be some classes that will decrease. Uh, right now, for instance, in one of our elementary schools, uh, they're maxed at 25 in their third and fourth grade. We have others across the district that are uh, as low as 14 or 15. So when you balance them out, um, there'll be some classes, some students will have smaller students in their class. Um, but we do need to balance those classes out. It's not an equity issue right now for some classes to be that much larger than others. Okay, so in regards to equity, equity for whom? For teachers or for students? Where does the equity come into play? For everything. I mean, we want to make sure that, you know, if, for, if a teacher has 21 students, that's more phone calls, that's papers, you know, that's one-to-one -one attention. If another teacher has 28 students, uh, we also want the learning to be equitable. If I'm, if I'm a student sitting in a class of 14 and I'm a student sitting in a class of 26, how much direct instruction am I getting? Also, there's more than just the number. We want equity and consistency across the district. Um, with multiple ele elementary buildings, that's much more difficult. We want to make sure that every student is getting equal access and opportunity to all of our programming. So you've also spoken about how this will also maybe eventually improve teaching and learning opportunities and save um, realizing by shifting to this new model. How, how will that all take place? Well, you know, for instance, you know, one of the models has all of the students of a specific grade in the same building. Not only would that be equitable in class size, but those teachers will have more opportunities to collaborate, to share best practices, to work together. Um, all of those opportunities will lead to higher student achievement. Is that not happening right now? It's very difficult. I mean, right now we have four elementary schools and they're on different shifts. Um, so even having planning time at the end of the school day is difficult because of our bus runs. Um, so one of the goals is to definitely align curriculum. And well, since I've been here, uh, one of the comments and concerns that parents have is consistency and what's being offered at all fell four elementary schools. Is that consistent and is that same knowledge base? So that's one of the things we really want to work on. Has a decision been made 
No, the decision has not been made. We're finishing up with the transportation work right now. Uh, my goal is to present a proposal to the board in December, um, hopefully with a vote in January. And can we wait on this? I know that a lot of parents had talked about, can we wait maybe another year so that we can talk about it more and look at more facts and, and figures and things like that? The concern with waiting is it would be a million dollar wait. And there's a lot of things we can do for students um, as far as supports and academic with, with almost a with almost million dollars. Um, the numbers that won't change is a decrease in enrollment. Um, I think one of the advantages of doing it sooner is we do have the federal money that will help us support. We do have additional social workers, we do have other supports for students that we have purchased through our federal funding and that money we will have for a couple more years. So it would be nice to tie all those things together um, as we do this redistricting. And that was also another big concern was the SEL part of this um, and also special education. And can you maybe elaborate on sure. that? Uh, we know that and one of the things we're definitely building and we were very happy uh, with our federal money that we were able to bring in and we now have a social worker in every building. Um, and we also added an additional social worker at our junior, C junior senior high campus. As far as special education, we are definitely going to do everything we can to meet the needs of our students, both legally and what we know is right. Um, this, I believe this collaboration and this reconfiguration will better support our students with special needs. A lot of our students right now are not going to their home school because we're limited with programming due to resources. So this is a great opportunity for a look at our special ed programming and make sure we're meeting the needs of our students and what other type of programming can we offer and increase our mainstreaming. What were some of the other factors that you looked into in regards to this? I know that transportation and that was bringing busing um, and so the transportation study was hugely important to, you know, shedding some light on that issue. Yeah, the biggest thing we looked at was obviously the geography uh, of Saugatis, the transportation, the building capacity, uh, building use, building configuration. So all of those components went into what we thought the models were. Um, we obviously are very limited in models because of our geography and because of the size of our buildings. But yeah, they were the factors that we really took into consideration the most. And obviously, we'd like to better reallocate our sources and directly put that into programming. We're not looking to close a building either. No. One of our goal, our goal is obviously to repurpose a building. Um, we have a very strong pre-K program in Saugatties right now. We would like to see that grow. Um, we also feel that there may be a need in the county um, for pre-K services for students with special needs. Um, so we're also researching that as well. So if that building stays open, then it seems like all buildings are staying open then. Yes, that is our goal. So, but there is still some benefits to having that building being repurposed. Yes. And that would be some form of income? Well, not really income, but the goal would be for how, how does that building, how does if we rent spaces out, if we bring in outside agency, how does that support uh, the whole district and the needs of the entire district itself? And can you also give us um, maybe some of the pros and cons to the scenarios that we have right now? There's an A, B, and C, and what are those? So one of the first ones we looked at was just a straight redistricting. Uh, right now, based on our enrollment, um, our students easily meet the needs in three buildings. So a traditional model would be just to redistrict, repurpose one building, and have three K-6 buildings. Uh, the advantage of that is transportation. You have more students that walk. Uh, we keep our neighborhood schools. Uh, the, the negatives or the cons of that model is we don't save as much money. We're still not guaranteed the equity in the class size. We could have to repurpose or redistrict again in the future. Um, and as well as lack of, once again, that consistency because we, we now have three buildings and we're spread across geography. Uh, the second model we're looking at is two K-3 buildings, one on the northern end of the district, one on the southern end and using um, the school, the elementary school in the middle as an intermediate four, five, six building. Uh, the advantage of that is we can really put our resources into that intermediate level. We know that sixth to seventh grade transition is very difficult. Uh, the other advantage of that is we would have two K-3 buildings. We wouldn't have uh, the strongest consistency, but we would definitely greatly increase, but we would also still have a sense of the community schools, um, and, that would, and that would still save us money. Uh, the last model uh, that I was asked to research is the grade banding of the Princeton model where you would have a K-2 building, 3-4 building, and a 5-6 building. Uh, the pros of that is obviously all your grade levels are in the same building, so you have consistency with curriculum, you have consistency with class size. The negatives is obviously transportation, 
you'd have to have multiple runs, extended runs, um, and also you'd have multiple transitions. Students would be in multiple buildings. You could have families uh, with children in multiple buildings, um, but that is the most cost-effective model. It is important that interested community members are able to contact us on this decision-making journey. Their feedback is vital.